Oh, there's the audio. One day I'm going to get this right. You should have audio now. The audio should be working now. All right. Let me make two shares and we're going to be cooking. So one programming note, in case I didn't... Um, in case I didn't mention it, we will not have Bible class on Monday. We will have Bible class tomorrow. So tomorrow, Saturday, same bad time, same bad channel. Monday, not going to happen. So I need a day off. I, I haven't had a day off in... Um, I can't remember the last full day off I've had, and so I deserve one. Hi, Linda Kimmel. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Tim. Pastor Rake. Hi, Maggie. Bobby Joe. Terry Lynn. Grace. Carol. Sandra. Linda Kimmel. William. Sue Pellegrini. Jennifer. I think that's everybody. Suzanne, good to see you. Carol, Gene Small, that's everybody. Colonel Davis is here, and Steve, my friend from Lombard, Texas, Trinity Lombard. All right. One more. All right. Well, I'm sure all of you are excited that you've been deemed essential by the president. Good afternoon, Eric. Churches are now deemed essential. Aren't you excited? I know I am. Hi, Heather. Chapter 23. All right, here we go. This, hi, Pat. All right. I'm just going to tell you in advance that I can see myself getting loud today. I can see myself getting, um, I can see myself getting going today because the text today is so magnificent. Chapter 23, please, um, Please join me for chap chapter 23 of Matthew's Gospel. Buckle up! Oops. That was, that was me looking at it. But we're right here. 23-1. So we ended yesterday with them not daring to ask any more questions. My collar's not on straight. It's been one of those days. Mama said there'd be days like this. There'd be days like this, my mama said. Um, Jesus said, the, uh, said to the crowds and to his disciples. Um, so I, I, want, I want you to sort of, he just sent them out. He just, he just silenced them. All right, they're not going to ask him any more questions. Hey, buddy. People want to see you, man. We did not walk today, so um, uh, okay. The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses's seat. This, this is there's two different meanings to this. You can you can picture this as um, you can picture this as um, they're in his office, and therefore you should respect them.
you also can take this another way, which is they're lawgivers. Lawgivers. So, one, respect their office. They're, they are in the... Um, respect their office. They are in the... Um, the seat of Moses. But also, Sinai and the mountain that should be lifted up and thrown into the sea is what they're peddling. They peddle all. Come over here, buddy. Enough of that. What's going on, man? Whoa. They sit on Moses' seat. So do... Actually... Do and observe isn't really helpful. Um, it's do, um, it's, uh, and so all that they, whatever they, they say, treasure, treasure and do. So terrain, terreo is that word to, um, that we've had before, which means guard. So again, uh, the Lord isn't undoing everything that went before. Um, he, he says, um, he says, respect them. And this is what, what, what I mean by this is the Lord doesn't vacate the office. He fulfills it. So like you got, um, where you, where you get, uh, whoever possesses this treat possesses the power of Thor. Good boy. So you got this business where like, Caiaphas in John's gospel prophesies and he doesn't even know he's doing it because he's in the Lord's office. Okay. And this is something important too. You can dislike your pastor. All right. He can be, um, he could be a putz. He could be a guy who, um, who's just a mess up. Okay. Uh, but you still need to listen to his words. Okay? So they sit in Moses' seat. They're lawgivers. Hey, buddy. Hi. High five. Oh, look at that high five. Um, they're lawgivers, though. And we're about to find out what's wrong with them. Oops, missed it. That's a good catch. So, like, cherish and do their words... But they don't do their words. They but but do not but, but but not the works they do. So cherish the when they read the word, cherish when they preach, but do not do do not do the works they do. For they they um for they speak and they don't do. So like they give out the law but they don't do the law. They lay out the law and what people should do, but they don't actually do the law. Aw, oh, thanks, Linda. When your pastor has a cool dog like this guy right here. Look at him. He's in doggy heaven right now. Right there. That's the spot. That's the spot. Right. This is great, Pastor Rake. He's telling them insofar as the teach the law, do them, but the do the do the but don't do the law the way they do. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Four. That's not a word I know. Des Oh, that is, they tie up, they tie up heavy burdens. 
and they make them hard to bear. And they put them on the shoulders of men and are not willing, uh, they, they do not will to move a finger to, to help them, to do them. There you go, big boy. There you go. And now we're getting to the rub. Okay? Now we're getting to the love. rub. And, and while he's talking about Pharisees, I want to, to direct your attention to preachers of today who burden your conscience with laws, who wish to change your behavior while they themselves don't do those laws. You see, they love the law, except for other people. Oh, no. This is why we walked him. He's in the squeak toys. You're welcome, Cindy. Hey, buddy, you want to come here? You got your squeak toy? He's smart enough not to bring it near me. So, and this is what preachers are saying. Oh, they love the law. Oh, how they love the law. They love the law. They love the law. Don't you know they love the law? They love the law. You should love the law too. But do they do the law? No. And what do they do with the law? They burden people's consciences with heavy burdens. And they don't lift a finger to free them from those burdens. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Yeah, Donald, we all love the law as it applies to others. So, like, this is why um, the pastors here on a regular basis have someone. You want to raw me up? Oh, you, you got the gator? I'll take the gator. Thank you. You want to rile me up? All you need to do is come out of church and say, that was a good pa good sermon, Pastor. They needed to hear that. What normally happens when that happens is, and it's not rote for me. This is not mechanical. These are not catchphrases for me. I don't give a catchphrase after that. It makes my blood boil so much that I follow the person and I'm, I'm, I'm hollering at the person. I wasn't preaching to them. I was preaching to you. They didn't need to hear this. You needed to hear this. And William Robinson is great on this too. You see, I want you to contrast heavy burdens and, and putting people under with the law with what Jesus says. Deny yourself. Put away yourself. Put away that religion that you know about and take up your cross and follow me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As opposed to the Pharisees, as opposed to the Pharisees who burden people down with heavy burdens. But they themselves don't lift a finger to lift them. People who would who would cut the knees off the gospel, they would cut the knees off the gospel. Wait, 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 wait. That wonderful gospel will cause people to sin. The gospel never caused anyone to sin. No, sin, original sin, the world, the devil. Those are the things which cause people to sin. The gospel never, ever, ever once caused somebody to sin. You don't need the gospel to fornicate. You'll fornicate on your own. I never taught my kids to steal. They just stole. All right? My son, six months old. Beautiful pop from McDonald's. With you, McDonald's has amazing Diet Coke, let me just tell you. And the cup was a, it was sweaty, you know? And it, and it was just the right amount of, of, of everything that you'd ever want in a fountain drink. All right? And my toddler comes running down, running over, and I said, and I, stop, do not touch my drink. Do you understand me? Don't touch my drink, kid. All right. Now, 
what does he do? He leaves a little bit and then he comes back and he's at full speed. And as he's at full speed, he runs by and he grabs my drink. And he just, so a little toddler running away from me. All right. Sucking on my drink. And I'm screaming at him. Stop. The gospel caused this. The gospel caused this. The gospel caused this. Jesus forgiving you caused this. No. I, I started screaming at him. Stop you little thief. I'm bringing my, my drink. And the more I ran after him, the more he his little legs were going. The gospel never caused anyone to sin. Sin does that. Sin in you. In fact, if you read Romans, the Christian doesn't sin. Sin in me sins. Your old Adam sins. Your new Adam doesn't sin. Your old Adam tries to drag you down. That's why by daily contrition and repentance. Drown that old Adam. But he's like a buoy. He pops back up again and you got to drown him again. Notice the contrast between the Pharisees who love to burden people's consciences. William, great, 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 great. Props to you, man. Between the the, the, the Pharisees which love to burden people's consciences and, and Jesus who wants to loose your, your conscience, who wants to free you from your burdens, who wants to take his, your burdens upon himself so that you could die. Whenever these guys want to go on and on about how much they love the law, I, 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 I just all I can say is, have you read the law? Yes, Felicity, my voice gets that high. Have you read the law? Have you actually read the law? So you know a gospel preacher? You know a gospel preacher because the gospel preacher, when they're preaching the law, gets scared. When I'm preaching the law, I think to myself, oh no, I'm going to hell. If this is the last message that God is going to give me, I'm going to hell. Love the law. Yeah, I love the law in my new man because my new man likes to kill my old man. You hear the squeakster? See what you've done, Cindy? Next time I'm going to walk him. Erica, remind me to walk him before next time. So the... Just beware of the Pharisees. Respect their office, but don't do their works. They burden people with, with guilt and shame. And they don't lift a finger to help them out. Not a glass of cold water for one of these disciples. There's more. There's more. I'm not quoting that, Tim. You're, you're just going to get me in trouble. I love you, man. <laughs> the new man loves the law. The, the, the formula of Concord says the new man doesn't need the law. If it wasn't for... Um, if it wasn't for our old Adam, the new man wouldn't need the law. All their their works they do to be seen by men. Verse five. Um. They enlarge their phyl uh, phylacteries. This, these, this, this, this. Um, uh, small leather boxes containing scripture verses. These were tied on one's forehead and arms, on the fringes. Deuteronomy six eight. Tassels containing blue strands that the Jews attached to the corners of the garment to remind them of the commandments. Numbers fifteen thirty eight to forty. If you have the Concordia Study Bible. They make their, they, they enlarge in their, um, uh, these like scriptures that they wear and they, and they, and they make them long. The broader the tassel at the edge of their, um, on the fringes of their, uh, and they make their fringes long. 
So they like to they like to wear the scriptures. As they love places of honor, proto kiss eon. It is like the first places. Proto first. So like the like the first seats and dinners and the best seats in the synagogues and the the greetings in the marketplace and the. Uh, and being called uh, uh, by man, Rabbi, Rabbi. Uh, pause for a second here. First off, lots to repent of. For both Pharisees and pastors. We may not wear scripture verses on us. We do like the front seat. We do like the respect people gives us. Give us. We do expect to say something and somebody to do it. And there's a lot to repent of there. Because what we need to be about is the gospel. We need to be about forgiving people and unburdening people. That's what we need to be about. I love Dickens on this. Um, uh, Christmas Carol. Uh, Marley. My business should have been, mankind should have been my business. We should be about forgiving sinners. That's what we should be about. Yes, getting respect is better than getting disrespected, Newman. Excuse me, Lestico. Respect is good. And respect for the word is beautiful. But never think that your pastor doesn't put one leg on and, and, and then the other. One pants leg on and then the other. His farts do stink. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. And the only hope he has, a true faithful pastor, is the forgiveness of sins that he gives out. Forget that. We come all about ourselves. Ugh. Can't stand clergy. Wait. You know what I mean. Bad ones. What you want is the forgiveness of sins. Can you lift God's Almighty off a man's conscience as it sits there with all of God's divine weight? I can't, but the Lord's words can. And that's what we should be about, Pastor Rake. Um, I can't make anyone feel better. Um, all the failures in my ministry, my ministry, um, have been where I thought I could do something. I thought that my charm and wit could bring unity to a parish. And it wasn't until I was broken that I realized I got nothing that I could bring to the table at all. Um, we all have people who sit before us and we have nothing that we can say other than the forgiveness of sins. It reminds me of an old pastor. He's with the Lord now. Um, I actually vicared at the same place as Matthew Harrison. Um, like There was Harrison and then there later on me and I used to, they and I knew I was in trouble when they're like you know you're a good vicar but there was a vicar who used to play the banjo and I was like is that guy's name Matthew Harrison yes anyway um and so Harrison and I could uh imitate the former senior pastors um there's sort of mannerisms and the way he would talk you know? uh, uh, George uh Good to see you. Come into my office. Um, so, but this guy, okay, he wasn't my my senior. There was a guy after him, but but this guy at funerals, the first funeral I ever went to there, um, as the as the the people as the as he approached the the lady who died, the lady whose husband died, um, he took her hand, and he said, "Whoever believes 
and is baptized shall be saved. And then he left. And I was like, what is up? It, is that all you got? I mean, give, I mean, is that all you got? Is that it? That's all you got? I mean, you got more, don't you? Like, you're going to give her a hug? Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna tell her everything's gonna be okay. Um, that's it. And I judged him because I was a Pharisee, as all Sim students are, and teenagers as well. Present company excluded, Felicity. P kids judging their parents as if they know better when they have never experienced anything like what their parents are experiencing. Fast forward 10 years and a lady, I, I'm going out of church and I, and she tells me that her husband died. She sat through the whole church service. She tells me her husband died. And I looked at her, I didn't know what to say. And I just looked at her and I said, whoever believes is baptized shall be saved. Grant this Lord to us all. The comfort that your pastor has, yes, we can, as you say, by the gospel. The, co the comfort that pastors have, true pastors, it's not in the third use of the law. And I'm not denying the third use of the law. I'm just saying the third use of the law pales in comparison to the artic the chief article upon which the church stands are false. Well, you're putting them against each other. Just bear with me for a second. The article upon with the, which the church stands are forged, which is the comfort of the gospel. The comfort of the word over and against more burdens. More burdens. More laws. The only hope we all have is Christ. That he would take our burdens away. And we all have to confess that we love people respecting us, that we love the titles that we have, that we love the things that we do. Hey, buddy. Want a treat? I hit him right in the head with it. Did you see it? Right off the coconut. I hit the dog in the coconut. Anyway, um... We all love the respect that we get, but we're really, we really should only be about the forgiveness of sins. Only, only against the law. No, law toward the gospel. Law toward the gospel. This is a different gospel, but in this weekend's reading, if you're, well, yesterday's reading in Luke, preach repentance toward ace, toward the forgiveness of sins. Law toward the gospel. If your main goal, if my main goal is to change Sue Pellegrini's behavior. And she's a, you're a nice lady, mom. Make you nicer. Then I've lost the, the, the reason why I'm here and I'm, I've become a Pharisee. Missed it. Back to the text. Hey, buddy, it's right here. Come over here. It's right here. Come on, come over. You want this? Right here. But you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher. What an interesting word for this. You have one guide. Ho Christo. This is a... Uh, this is 
not in all the um there's a variant which is which is uh didaskin test which is a which is a more commonly used word in the gospels um but i like i like the majority text here um you have one guy, the Christ, and all of you are brothers. How much, what a wonderful world this would be if we acted as brothers. And call, and you, and, and call no one your father on earth. For you have one father. Who is in heaven? All right. Um, does this mean that Roman priests are in the wrong for being called father? No. Does this mean some of our Lutheran brothers are in the wrong who who call, who who have their parishioners call them father? What 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 this is about is respect. Um. Paul calls Onesimus his son who he begot in chains and wants people to be, wants people to, to understand, um, I think it's this Corinthians, spiritual fathers. So I don't have an issue with calling somebody, um, calling your, uh, your, your pastor, your father and your faith. But this is about what this is about is being wrapped up in the title. In the freedom of the gospel, you can call your pastor pastor. You can call him father. You can call him shepherd. You can call him reverend. In the freedom of the gospel. Oh no. R E S P C T. Um. Uh. What it's about is respect. Um, it's about it's about respect. And if if a parishioner wants to give respect, that's one thing. If you demand respect, you're in the wrong business. So when people call me pastor or father or whatever they do, I I usually just um, I don't I don't I don't stop them, but. If they call me by my given name, um, I don't stop that either. I'll just tell them, look, if you're in the ditch, um, if you're in the ditch and you call out George, it's not really, I don't really have much that I can help you with. But if you call out, if you call out pastor, you got a, you got a person who can forgive your sins. But it's not about titles. It cannot be about titles and respect and having the top seat at the parties, if that's what we've become up as clergy, we're as bad as the Pharisees. As bad as the Sadducees. Fair and sad. Verse 10. Uh, neither call them... Um, teacher for you have a teacher the Christ so now you see why um, earlier up here um, in verse 8 um, for you have one teacher the Christ while there would, would have been the addition of the Christ there Ah, uh, the dean is here. I prefer to be the back of the line and all potlucks because I like to get as much as I want. I don't have to worry about my neighbor. Look, please don't take this as don't call your pastor pastor or don't call your pastor father or don't call your, your catechism instructor or catechism instructor. He's talking about respect and, 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 and telling them not to demand respect from others. And to be about the level thing. Remember the fruit of the Pharisees. The, the yeast of the Pharisees is bad. They're not going to get it. We're not going to get it. Uh, we don't have any bread. 
No, I'm talking about the teaching of the Pharisees. And here he's talking about the works of the Pharisees. Respect their office, but not their works. Do and guard their words, but not their works. Verse 10. Because here's the deal. The maison humon, the greatest of you should be diakonos, the servant. This, this is what this has been all about. Whoever exalts himself will be meet, will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted or lifted up. Love lift us up where we belong. This is about humility. This is about a dose of humble pie. And your pastor says he's a slave. He says it. He says it. He says it. As a called and ordained servant of the word. He says it. I'm the slave for Jesus. I'm here and I got one job. And that is to forgive and retain your sins. All right, I'm not your CEO. I'm not your the, the the head of the management team. I'm not the CFO. I'm not the PDQ, the FAT, the BOSS. I'm a servant, slave. Now, let that go to your head and exalt yourself. Start ordering me around. Start telling me that you're the boss of me. Start micromanaging my time. Start telling me when I when I need to do this or that or how to do my job. I'm going to look at you and say, um, remember, I am a called and ordained servant of the word. I'm not your boy. But if you have sins, if you need forgiveness, if you need your burdens lifted off of you, I'm the slave that's going to do it. Notice the difference. We're all, and he's aware of it, the Lord is. We're all doing this thing with the levels. All right, we are all doing this thing with the levels. All right, where we do levels, up the chain we go. All right, about how important we are, how great we are. Do you know what I am? Do you know how long I've been a member of this church? My daddy was on the building committee that made this church. Well, that's great. So you, above all people, should be trying to figure out how to love and serve your neighbor. This whole section is about humility about setting and repenting them and dying to the arrogance and letting the external word which is able to save your soul and cherishing it. Yes, we progress so far, Pastor Finker. We are so, so far in advance that we know how to subjugate our neighbor under them. Parents being told by kids what they can and can't do. Or kids leaving their parents to die rather than take care of them. The Christian is free, Lord of all, subject to none, says Luther. The Christian is dutiful, servant of all, subject to anyone. And it's not just pastors who be, should be stumbling over each other trying to figure out how to serve one another. It's all of us. And the conflicts between congregation and pastor would all go away if it wasn't about who's the boss of whom and it was more about 
Let me serve you. No, let me serve you. Let me take care of you. No, let me take care of you. No, let me take care of you. No, I got your back. No, I got your back. No, I'm going to take the blame for this. No, I'm going to take the blame for this. And Jacoby is right on. Boom. Looks like we need a savior. We need someone to save us from all of this. To unburden us. To rescue us. To free us from the slavery of standing before God by what we haven't, haven't done. Because it's about Jesus for you. Not you for, not others for you. It's about Jesus for you, suffering and dying. He's the servant. The suffering one. The forgiveness of sins. Yes, Pastor Lestico, I miss Erica's comments because of I don't always see them because of the let the reader um, be aware. Um, so I want you to, to take the time to think about these things because this section calls us to repentance for making the Christian faith about doing and not doing. But it also calls us to repentance for all the arrogance that we have. We should be stumbling over each other making other people first. Instead, we stumble over people, uh, over others, trying to make them see us about how important we are. We need to repent of all of that. That's all I got today. Wait, I got one more thing. Store.higherthings.org Don't forget to get your hat. Got plenty of hats like this, cleaner than this one. All right. Store.hiredthings.org. Go and get a hat just like this one. Only cleaner. And shirts and fandanas and other dare to be Lutheran stuff. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. I won't see you Monday. But I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Sorry for the rant a little bit. Um, your sins are forgiven you. Go in peace.